The nuclear emergency in Japan is of particular significance to Americans living close to older nuclear reactors of exactly the same design as the crippled Japanese plant. 23 of the boiling water reactors Mark I, built by General Electric, mostly in the 1970s, are still operating at 16 plants spread across much of the country. It's a design that has worried Dale Breidenbaugh for 35 years, since he worked as a safety manager for GE. My job was to try and figure out how to make these plants run better. He was disturbed by the possible consequences if a plant ever lost power. I was most concerned about the fact that we discovered that we didn't really know what would happen. When GE and the utilities operating their reactors ignored his concerns, Breidenbaugh and two colleagues quit in 1976. The containment system response would be a failure, similar to what we're seeing now at Fukushima. The Mark I containment system is somewhat more compact than others, but still has multiple layers of metal and reinforced concrete surrounding the fuel rods. But the Mark I also has a unique feature. The spent fuel rods, which are still radioactive, are stored for cooling in water-filled pools above the containment structure under a much lighter roof. At Fukushima, those spent rods have caused big problems. There was some hydrogen, I guess, generated in the spent fuel pond that um, ignited and blew the roof off. In a statement today, GE says over the last four decades, the Mark I has been modified in the form of retrofits to address technology improvements and changing regulatory requirements. Breidenbaugh acknowledges the improvements over the years, but says the same danger remains for the Mark I reactors still operating here. Anything that would wipe out the backup power system to those plants could result in the same thing that's happening at Fukushima. While the risk is there, so is the need for energy. With 20% of our electricity coming from nuclear plants, even the older ones are still considered essential. John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco.